And for more on this story, in Myanmar, we're joined by Dr. Yang Hee Lee. She's a former UN Special Rapporteur on the country, speaking to us from Seoul. And Dr. Lee, now let me pick up uh, from what our correspondent Waikid mentioned earlier. When he was talking about the reduction of uh, Ms. Suchi's sentence from 33 to 27 years, he called the six years, relatively speaking, a minute, and I quote him, reduction. Now for her, it doesn't change her life, certainly doesn't bring her back into Myanmar's political sphere. But for you, this might suggest a big change in terms of strategy for the military rulers in Myanmar. Thank you for having me. Um, this really tells you that the military, the junta and men online is really uh, out of ideas, is really at the end of the rope. Uh, reducing the sentence of a 78 year old lady who had been locked up on bogus charges should not be seen as an act of contrition or a conciliatory gesture by the brutal generals. However, if they are, as you suggest, at the end of their rope and they are to rely on a symbolic gesture such as cutting prison terms for Ms. Su Chi, uh, Ms. Su Chi, relatively speaking, is safe, but for the many people on the ground, and we have seen airstrikes going up, certainly since April this year, with an increase in the type of air power that the Tatmadaw has, what does this suggest in terms of Min Online being able to impose more control on the ground, when even in February, when he, he last extended before this time, the state of emergency, he said, more than a third of the townships in Myanmar are not under the full control of the military government. This is just another one of the schizophrenic behaviors of men online in particular. Um, and he, the military is resorting back to its old, decades old playbook. They think that uh, Reducing sentences for Minamata, for excuse me, for Aung San Suu Kyi and the President Wu Win Mint will, first of all, get some of the support of the people, and uh, more importantly, get the international recognition. They want to sh shed a light to the international community that they're willing to move forward. That they want. It's it's like a. a, a a, a, a coating, a veneer, uh, so that the international community can recognize them as the legitimate uh, government of, of Myanmar. And as you said, uh, they don't have control over the country. More than 50% of the control is under the ethnic uh, control. And, uh, you know, we have uh, the September ASEAN summit coming up. And uh, November uh, UNGA and calling for another recognition for credentials for the, a seat in the General Assembly. And so Min Lai is now end of, at the end of his rope trying to pl uh, pull out the old playbook. Uh, but, you know, I, I think it's time that the international community really wakes up and, and sees that what he's doing has been a, a decades old trick and, and will not get him far enough because he will never have support of the people. All right. The international community should wake up, could wake up. You have been, you were first appointed special rapporteur in 2014. So you have worked with the international community. You have seen them being very generous with aid, for example, to Ukraine. Do you see that happening with Myanmar? And if you do not, why? This, this really surprises me, you know, how the international community behaves. Uh, Russia invades Ukraine. Okay, so it's a bad Russians invading Ukraine people. So it's a country to country invasion. So we must help. And it's in the backyards of the European uh, continent. But when it comes to Myanmar, it's the same thing. Min online, the military has invaded its own people. It's not just a coup. What they're doing is, as you mentioned, the airstrikes. There's been 30, average of 30 airstrikes per month recently. 85% of the casualties are civilian. And millions of people have been displaced. Now they're 
using the same tactics they used against the Rohingya in 2016 and 2017 when they drove them away. Uh, they're uh, burning their villages, they're burning their schools, they're burning their places of worship. This is in a Myanmar people that they're doing, not just the Rohingya. They're attacking schools, they're attacking hospitals, they're attacking churches, killing uh, families, killing young children, and abducting me, Dr. Lee. children. Uh -oh. We are running a little bit short of time, so I really need to cut in and pardon me. A final question, since you mentioned the Myanmar people, so for example, this gesture as far as Ms. Aung San Suu Kyi is concerned, that may please international critics of the military government. But for the people in Myanmar who have been increasingly united in their fight to defend themselves mm -hmm. and to form a new a, a Myanmar that they can identify with, does it matter to them as much as it might have done in 2016 what happens to Ms. Aung San Suu Kyi? Does this cutting of a prison sentence matter that much to the people of Myanmar? Has Myanmar moved on? I think the people of Myanmar has moved on. Um, Aung San Suu Kyi is still very much respected. However, the fight now is the people's fight, the young generation. The people have now been united. They, they're uh, built on, uh, on solid consolidation and solidarity across ethnic lines and across generation lines. The Bama people cannot fight this war by themselves without the ethnic communities. And the ethnic communities are now joining hands with the Bama and the young generation. It's their fight. It's the war for a dream that they've been, they've heard their parents talk about, and they want to realize this dream, is a dream for a free, democratic, federal Myanmar. And I'm sorry to say, Aung San Suu Kyi's pardon may not and definitely will not affect the young people's minds because they're fighting for their lives to defend their family and their country and their hope and their aspirations. Uh, thanks so much for joining us this evening, Dr. Yang Healy, former UN Special Rapporteur on Myanmar.